Hi folks, I'm Sean McCormick and welcome to the channel. Something exciting today, Adobe Max is on. And as for the last couple of years, we've gotten a new version of Lightroom at Adobe Max. Have we this year? Yeah, of course we have. So welcome to Lightroom Classic 10. Folks, Lightroom Classic 10 is out and there's some nice features in it. Um, we're not getting the huge, huge updates that we used to get in the past, but we are still getting really good updates with new features that will be good for everybody. Now, there's some of the features I can't show you because they're camera relevant and I'm Fuji and it's for Canon and Nikon, but let's get in and see what I can talk about, okay? So, um, yes, I know I am secretly having my website up here, so please do go to my website because on the news page I do all sorts of reviews and stuff like that that isn't necessarily on YouTube. So please do go give that a look. But the first thing I'm going to do here in the background is I'm actually going to open up Lightroom. Um, but I'm going to do it um, and choose a catalog because I'm going to force an upgrade as part of this catalog because oh, it didn't. It just went straight in. So uh, I'm going to go open catalog and choose the old version of this catalog because it will do something that you need to see, basically. And it's one of the first things that are here. And um, so, uh, upgrade the, so I'm gonna bring this up to you here, okay? So you now have an option when you're upgrading a catalog to name it whatever you like. Whereas before this would become X-2. So now it's suggesting, you know, X, whatever, version two. Okay, so we we'll just call it. To call it X2, you know, just to give it a name. It doesn't really matter, okay? But I'm just showing that you now can control what you name your catalog and upgrade so that you're not going back afterwards to get rid of the dash two stuff and then having to rename your catalog file, your previous file, and your uh, smart previous file. I do have a video about doing that, by the way. And um, so, all right, this is just it done. But I'm gonna go back to a different version of this upgrade that I've added stuff to since. And relaunch and that will give us a look at some of the new features. There's one particular feature that I'm very, very excited about, which we're gonna see here. And that'll come really quickly here. And so I'll just do a little reset on this, go to develop and do a reset. We'll see that. And here we have, we see here that we no longer have a split toning panel. It's gone and become color grading. So our sets of double sliders um, for uh, human saturation and the shadows and highlights are now replaced with wheels color wheels, so we have HSL, which applies towards the, the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights. Now we're not just restricted to this view, we can go to individual ones as well, where we get a slight bit more finesse. And of course we also have global. So global basically is the overall color tone. Um, so uh, just make sure that it's fully reset. And so if you want, you can say like have a warmer image or a cooler image straight away, just from one look. Okay. Now, as we're going, if we hold the shift key, the shift key will restrict it to just sat saturation. And then if you hold the command or control key, if you're on PC, um, you get just the hue. All right. So you're able to fix those as well. So you're not jimmying around too much. All right. So let's do something here. And I've kind of made that slightly warmer, but we can come here now, let's say, and we will go for, so for kind of go for cooler shadows. That's kind of a little bit too green. So I'm just going to bring it down into the blues a little bit more. Okay, and I'm going to keep the mid-tones a little bit kind of in the warm section and then the highlights so we can go straight away and kind of make it more kind of orangey, kind of more autumnal. Okay, uh, so that, that obviously that is way, 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 way more powerful. Now the blending slider, what it does is it basically changes the overlap between shadows and highlights. Okay, and then balance does what it does before. So it's towards the shadow tone colors and then towards the highlight colors, as we can see there. So that's pretty much what it used to do in split toning that hasn't changed. So this is uh, the color grading. So let's just grab uh, grab another image. Like, well, let's grab this image here, all right? Uh, same story. And we can come in here and let's say we're gonna go for all kind of warms in this. So we're gonna keep the, the green of the shadows say, and then we're gonna go for kind of the more warmer tones in the mid-tones for that kind of autumnal feel. Okay, I think we can do as well as if we wanted, we can raise the shadows. And if you look here, we can see we're getting that gap. 
and normally what you'd have had to do is you come into the tone curve and do that to try and get that shadow lift but now you can do it as part of your color grading so it's, it's actually built into the color grade so when you save out a preset that just has color grading in it as well you can get the whole look as well with that light or dark look if you want inside the actual color grading itself it's a fantastic tool and um, color grading has become so important it's amazing to have something this quality now inside of Lightroom. Now we got lots as part of uh, profiles but they're really awkward to set up because you have to do it through Photoshop and um, this will give you like a very 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 good color grade from within Lightroom without having to use lots or any of that kind of stuff. Of course you can save the stuff and I'm sure that we are going to be absolutely inundated with presets from people as well that use this new color grading because it is that fantastic. Um, I did mention very, very briefly, the, there's a new Live View Tether um, coming. And well, it's here, obviously, for Nikon and Canon. I can't show it now because I don't have Nikon or Canon. I'm on Fuji. I use the Fuji X Pro, um, the, the Pro plugin, which gives you Live View as well and access to all of the features. Um, so I can't, I will try and get one and show it at some stage in the future. But we are heading into level five lockdown now. And so we're not even allowed to see people. So um, we'll see how it goes. So what else we have is we have a new zoom feature. Okay, I've just quickly gone and turned that on. If zoom isn't visible there, you can see it here. That's only because we can actually see what's going on here. So we have kind of between uh, six and 100, and then you get 100 up to 1600. Okay, and if we're looking here at our navigator, we can see that we've got fit and fill, 100% view, and then the various different sizes here that you can go through. And if we use the old uh, control keys for that, which is the command and control plus and minus, it's actually plus and equals, but you know, we can see that we have way more. So it's not jumping between the four levels we had before. And now if we hold down the shift key with G GPU turned on, it's essential the GPU is turned on. We can see that we have a really smooth scrubby zoom. Okay. So that is well, well handy. And the other thing is if you hold the command key or the control key on PC, you now have a box zoom, which will let you box zoom in. All right, so we've got way more control in, in that kind of views as well. So, uh, so that, that is Zoom, which is fantastic. -o. So I'm just going to jump to another image here now. And let's see if something with a bit of sky. And this one here I'll do for it. So another thing that we've got going on as well is we now have a little bit more control with our grade. Well, now this is obviously the graduate filter, but it's been referred to now and starting to be referred to as the linear gradient All right but what it is is that we now have a little bit more control over and as we can see here we've got a bit more performance enhancement as we're doing stuff so the real-time aspect of it is a little bit better than it was before okay uh, the same applies as well for the radial filter and for the brush tool as well so all of the, the the local stuff the other thing is that and i can't show it to you in this catalog here is that um, for folders and collections will actually scroll faster which is is good and that does genuinely work i will show that in a second and um, with my updated catalog so my main catalog has lots of folders and collections so we can see here that it's very smooth scrolling so that's really really good okay the same down here with collections so that as you can see is a great feature to have now so that's the bulk of it. The rest of it is kind of just camera support and uh, lens support. So there's stuff like the new Fuji X-S10, which has only just been announced. Um, so they have raw support for that already. Uh, there's also some of the, the Sony's, the A7C and the A7S3. Let me just have a quick peek. Um, so I'm not telling you lies. Uh, support the camera models. Yeah, the A7S3 and the A7C. And then there's also the Panasonic Lumix, the, um, uh, what is it, the DCS5. All right. And if you want to go and look, there is a what's new here. So if you go up here and it'll give you the uh, help, what's new will bring you up the what's new page and you'll be able to see all that kind of detail. Actually, let me just, uh, okay. And, and so that is it there. That's literally just, you know. Now, this is what the tethered live view looks like, basically. So, just to give you an idea, and it lets you focus on there as well. So, that is just to show you what it looks like. I will, like I say, I will try and get one for you so that we can have a go at it. So, folks, hopefully you found that useful. And 
Now, obviously, I'm not doing super slick production stuff here. This is just getting back into the flow doing it. But we've got six weeks of level five lockdown, so I could well be making a lot more videos. And of course, because I'm not making them every week, the polish is not there. So I apologize for that. But please, folks, do, if you like the video, find any of the stuff useful, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thanks a million. Much appreciated. Share the video if you want to share it. And of course, I will see you in the next video.